is in order to find a z-score and be able to use a standard normal distribution, which is the only reason why you ever find a z-score, is to use a standard normal distribution. Remember that the table you've been working with? It's a standard normal distribution, yeah? The only reason why you do that is to work with it. But in order to compare a single data value, you have to know this and you have to know that. That's the problem, right? You have to know those things for your population. So if you take a sample, it wouldn't really matter. You'd still have to know the mean and the standard deviation for the whole population to place that one value on that standard normal distribution. Now we're going to make a jump and say, hey, we don't just have one value. I'm not just sampling one person out of my group. I'm taking a full sample size, right? In that full sample size, I'm going to find the average and the standard deviation. Here's what the jump lets us do, what all this theory boils down to pretty much. Instead of an individual data value, I don't have those anymore. What I have now is the mean of my sample. In other words, instead of x, I'm going to deal with x. I'm dealing with x bar. Instead of Please watch carefully. I'm going to make a transition here in just a moment. I'm, I'm all automatically translating this into my sample stuff, right? And then I'm going to make a transition from here in just a moment. So first, instead of x, I'm dealing with my sample means. Not an individual, but a group of data. Instead of mu, I'm dealing with my average of my sample means. Instead of sigma, I'm dealing with my standard deviation of sample means. Are you guys okay with the transition here? So instead of individual data values, we're dealing with an average of our sample. Instead of a population mean, I'm dealing with a mean of all of my samples. Instead of dealing with a standard deviation of my population, I'm dealing with a standard deviation of all of my samples. Do you follow me up here so far? Here's the problem. This implies that you have every single possible daily sample, and you found the average for each one, and then you average those. Remember, those are huge numbers of items. And it says the same thing for standard deviation. Fortunately for us, we know a couple things about this. Here's the transition, the part. You're, you're not going to use this the way it is. You're going to use it after we translate it. How much is mu of x bar actually equal to? Mu. X bar is going to stay the same. We're, we know how to find that. This is the same thing as mu. How much is this actually equal to? Sigma over the square root. This right here is what we'll do to find the z-score of a group of data, of our sample. So this was for an individual data value. This is for a group of data values, or in other words, a sample. For an average of a group of values. In other words, sample. That's how you make a transition between an individual and a sample. Now, a curiosity might arise in you. It's a very fancy way of saying you might question. Why are you wondering? <laughs> well, Mr. Leonard, I thought the whole idea was to kind of get away from that and get away from that. How are we supposed to do that? Well, we, we can't. We're going to have to make some assumptions out of this. We're going to have to make some assumptions about the population mean and the population standard deviation. We're going to do that. Fortunately, I'll show you how to do that in the next few sections, okay? So right now, yeah, we're going to have to assume what the population mean is and what the population standard deviation is in order to use this stuff. In the future, we won't have to do that. In the future, we'll be able to go through and not only limit our error, but use our sample itself to make determinations about our population. But we're not there yet. This is just the first little step. How will feel okay about the first little step? So when you're dealing with a z-score of an individual, this one, no problem. 
We're dealing with a z-score of a group, of a mean, of a, a sample. This one. That's what we're talking about. Are you ready to try to put this into some practice? You sure? Okay. I'm going to give you two examples, really you only need two examples to see the difference here. I'm going to give you two examples uh, that illustrate the difference in what we're, we're doing. One you've already done, one you haven't done yet. Okay, so one is like old stuff, we're going to compare that to the new stuff. So write down both examples and then we'll do them together. So example number one and down here example number two. A population of men have a mean of 172 pounds and a standard deviation of 10 pounds. Do you notice something already? Do you notice how we're making an assumption about the mean and the standard deviation of a group of men? Notice? Standard population, group of men. But we've done a problem like that before. It doesn't look familiar to some of your homework that you've done already? So we've been doing that this whole time, making assumptions about those things. So a population of men have a a mean of 172 pounds and a standard deviation of 10 pounds. Uh, of course, I mean the, the weight of, I didn't put weight, but hopefully you understand that pounds is, is weight. What's lubes? I don't know what lubes is. Talk about weight. Find the probability that a randomly selected man will weigh more than, say, 185 pounds. You know what, let's change it. Let's do, uh, let's do 175 pounds. You okay with that so far? Are you sure? You sure you're sure? Does it look familiar? Done stuff like that before. Let's read the question one more time. The population of men has a mean of 172 pounds and a standard deviation of 10 pounds. Great, no problem. Find the probability that a random selected man will have a weight. Or sorry, the, the random selected man will weigh more than 175 pounds. The first thing you do is translate that to a z-score, correct? Then you draw a picture of it. You'd shade the appropriate side of your standard deviation, or uh, standard normal curve, and then you would find the area associated with that, and that would be a probability. You follow? Now you just need to know which z-score you're going to do. This one or this one. Don't answer that yet. We're comparing to our next example before we do this. Example two. Same information. A population of men, blah, 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 has a mean of... 172 pounds and a standard deviation of 10 pounds. Your problems are going to start off exactly the same. Exactly the same. Same exact wording. A population of men will have a mean of 170 pounds, standard deviation of 10. A population of men will have a mean of 170 pounds, standard deviation of 10. <coughs> The next part's going to be different. Find the probability, and I hope you see the key words here that I'm about to write. Find the probability that a 
that a group of 20 men will have an average weight of more than 175 pounds. Assume weight is from the distributed. We've already read this one pretty well through. Let's read this one. A population of men has a mean of 172 pounds and a standard deviation of 10 pounds. Find the probability that a group of 20 men will have an average weight of more than 175 pounds. Assume that weight is normally distributed. What's the difference between this problem that you've already done in this class and this problem you haven't done yet in this class. What are they, what are they talking about? Is this talking about an individual or a group? Individual. Is this talking about an individual or a group? group? Is this a single data value or an average? Single, single data value or an average? average? Notice even the wording, it's kind of given to you, right? If you try to, listen, if you try to plug this into this formula, There's no average to plug in for you for your sample. There's no n to plug in for your sample. You have an n of 20 here. Do you guys see the n of 20? You have a sample size of 20. Where would you put that? You wouldn't put that anywhere. It wouldn't even fit. You'd be like, mm, where's 20 go? Ah, just forget about it. That's not gonna work, right? Here, do you have a place for the sample mean? That's the sample mean. That's an average of your your group of 25 men. You're checking that. Do you have a place for your n? Yeah. Yeah, get a place for everything here. One, you have no sample mean. That says you're dealing with an individual. One, you have no group of whatever, group of 20, group of 40, whatever. You don't have that. That's this. It's an individual. If you have a group, you better have a, a number for that group. That's telling you. That's saying, please pick me. Pick me up. Okay, that's that. Do you guys see the difference in the wording of these problems? Now, the process is going to be identical, which is kind of nice because you've already done it. You're going to find the z-score using one of those two formulas. You're going to draw a picture. You're going to put that z-score on, on, not the kitty cat, right? Draw the center normal. Put that z-score on the picture, shade a certain side, then look it up. Look up the area. You guys ready to try it? Sure. Okay. So again, number one, we're dealing with an individual or a group? A data value or an average? This is four data values. So we would have this. We'd have first thing, translate to a z-score. What is my x value here, ladies and gentlemen? 75. Good, that comes first. Minus the mean for the population. How much is that? Over the standard deviation for the population, what are we assuming that's to be? This is going to be 3 over 10, or 0.33. You with me, ladies and gentlemen? Let's draw our 